Tool assisted speedruns for Half Life are created using the Bunnymod XT Task Editor. It is an in game tool where you interactively construct the path that the player will take. You can change which buttons the player is pressing and see the path update in game in real time. So, if Task Editor is so good, where is Task Editor 2? This is what I've been working on for quite a while, and it is out as part of BXTRS4. The workflow is mostly the same as before, but I've made big quality of life improvements. For example, I've added undo and redo, but not just some undo and redo. At any point while working on the task, even if you've just restarted the game, you can undo all the way to the very start of the task and then redo all the way back to the very end. In general, it is much harder to lose your work with Task Editor 2. Any change you make is immediately saved to the project file on disk as soon as you release the mouse or press the button. Even if you work for 20 minutes and then your game crashes, upon restarting the game, you will pick up just where you left off. I've made comparing different routes much less annoying in Task Editor 2 by adding branches. At any point in time, you can clone the current script into a new branch. You will see the original script visualized in grey alongside. The cool part is that other branches are drawn to the same frame as your current script, so as you change your current script to try a different route, you can see exactly how it compares to all the other branches. In some cases, manually editing the HLTest script is more convenient than working in the editor, so Test Editor 2 makes that workflow more convenient too. It creates a so-called Bridget file, which is synchronized to what's happening in-game in the editor. As you change the path in the editor, the Bridget file on disk updates right away. And as you change the Bridget file on disk, the in-game editor will pick up the changes automatically, without having to reload it or replay the task. There are several less drastic changes too. For example, you can now always edit the entire task and not just the part after the playback end. What a concept, I know. Playback can stop at any point and not just at frame bulk edges. The red-green collision colors are drawn for the entire task and not just for the current segment. The task optimizer is better integrated. There are commands to start the optimization right from the editor and then to apply the optimized script. If you are making a wiggle-style task, you can use right-click dragging to adjust the wiggle frame count. I have plenty more ideas for new functionality in Task Editor 2, however they will have to wait for the next release. I feel like Task Editor 2 is already in a pretty good shape and I want to get it out for people to use. Next, let me show you how to get started with Task Editor 2, assuming you already have some Half-Life testing experience. If you have any questions, feel free to join the Gold Source Task channel on the Source Runs Discord server, where there are always people happy to help. So for Task Editor 2, you will need new versions of both BXTRS and Bunnymod XT. This is because the core tasking support is still in Bunnymod XT and it has some required updates for the Task Editor 2 to function. In the config file, you will need to update your Task Editor binds. The new binds are called BXT Task Studio to avoid the naming collision with Test Editor 1. Most of them, like BXT Test Studio Toggle, are the same, however, there are some differences. For example, Insert Point was renamed to Split without a plus. I will point out the differences and new commands as I go through them. You will want to run two game instances as usual. Here I've got my main game instance. And at the bottom right, I've got my simulator client, which will provide accurate frames. I heavily recommend a two-game setup for testing. By the way, it seems that Valve has fixed the two-game crash with Steam API, so that's one less thing to worry about. Also, Test Editor 2 will pick up the second game automatically. You don't need to type any console commands. You can create a new task with BXT Task Studio New. Note the studio part. It works the same way as the old BXT Task New just creates a new Task Studio project. Doing this will drop you right into the editor, and it will print in the console the command that you can use to load your task later. You can also convert an existing HL task script. For that, open it in the editor and delete the BXT Task Editor 1 line. You will also want to take the movement commands from the first frame and move them into the load command. Now save the file and in-game type BXT Task Studio Convert HL Task and the script name. This will once again drop you right into the editor with your existing task loaded. In the editor, you can fly around and free cam as usual with BXT Task Studio Look Around. You can also drag the segments with right and left mouse buttons just in the old task editor 
and split them with BXT Test Studio Split. As you can see, the editor picked up my second game at the bottom right automatically and started simulating the script. One cool thing is as you move your mouse around the path, it shows a small indicator. This indicator shows where the segment will be split on BXT Test Studio Split. This indicator also shows the frame under cursor, the information which you can find in the Test Studio Status HUD on the top left, along with some information about the selected frame bulk. This HUD also shows a re-record counter, which is a fun little statistic, which increments with every change you make to the script. Compared to Test Editor 1, the Test Studio Status panel has a dark background, that's how you know it's more advanced. One important difference is that toggle commands work on the selected segment rather than on the segment under mouse. You can select a segment by clicking on it. You can see it becomes more saturated in color. You can also think of it like selecting a file in a file manager. It will take a little bit to get used to, but it's really not a big deal, because when you are right mouse dragging or left mouse dragging, the segment gets selected automatically. If you accidentally change the wrong segment, you can use undo. The way undo works is there are two commands, bxt test studio undo and bxt test studio redo. I recommend binding them to two buttons, because they are quite useful. To undo, just press the undo button. You can press it as many times as you want and go all the way back to the beginning of the script. Then you can use redo to go back to your last change. Even if your game crashes, the full undo history is always preserved in the project file. The only way you can lose your work is if you undo a lot and then do some change to the script. Then, since you overwrote the history, you can no longer redo, so be careful when you undo a lot. To play the task back, we first need to set the stop frame, with BXT Task Studio set stop frame. When you use it, you will see this yellow indicator appear. This is where the playback will stop. Now, to actually play back the task, use BXT Task Studio Replay. This will play the task and stop you right at the stop marker. One nice thing about Replay is that unlike Task Editor 1, it does not accept a file name argument, so you can use this same bind across multiple tasks that you work on, without having to change it. Now, as you can see, you can still edit the entire task, even before the playback stop point. So, if your task grows very large, and the beginning part starts to get annoying, how do you deal with this? There is a new BXT Task Studio Hide command. When you use it, it will hide the starting part of the script. It turns black and you cannot interact with it with the mouse, so it will never prevent you from working on the latest part of the script. To show the full script again, just point your mouse at the first hidden frame and press Hide. This will show the entire script. Next, let me show how branches work. In the Task Studio status, you can see a branch index, number 0, Branches start from number 0 and grow up by 1. At any point, you can clone the current script into a new branch with BXT Test Studio branch clone. Now, as you edit the branch, you will see the previous original script shown alongside in grey. And the cool part is that the original script is drawn to the same frame as the current branch, so this way you can easily compare where the player ends up at the same frame across multiple branches. You can switch between branches with BXT Test Studio branch Focus Next. This will cycle between the two branches, and you can work on them interchangeably. Once you've decided which branch to keep, you can use BXT Test Studio branch Hide and Focus Next to hide the other branches. It is important that branches are never deleted, just hidden so you can always show a previous branch by a branch index. So the branch that I've hidden was number 1, so I can use BXT Test Studio branch show ID 1, which will show that branch back. This way you can always come back to a previous branch if you need it. Now let's see how the Bridget file works. If you need to change something in the HL test manually, Whenever you open the test studio, it creates this Bridget file alongside the HL test proj file. So when you open it in the editor, it will be a regular HL test script, which is synchronized to what's happening in the editor. As you can see, as I change the script in the editor, the Bridget file updates automatically. And if I change the script in the Bridget file and save it, then the editor will also pick up the changes. Of course, you can also use undo and redo to undo and redo across those manual file edits. When switching between branches, 
the file will update to reflect the currently focused branch. Next, if you want to use the optimizer, there are two convenient commands. BXT Test Studio Optimunit will initialize the optimizer starting from the selected branch. Next, you can use the optimizer start command as usual to start the optimization. The next command is BXT Test Studio Optim Apply. It will take the current best script and paste it right into the editor, so that you don't have to copy-paste from the HLTest file manually. If you don't like the optimization result, you can just hit undo and undo back from it. Finally, the Test Studio has a limited version of Camera Editor, accessible with BXT Test Studio Camera Editor 1. I did not have energy to rethink its design for the first release of the Test Studio, so for now it works more or less the same as in Test Editor 1. Every frame will show the player's camera angle, and then blue lines will show the regions which can be smoothed. Pressing BXT Test Studio Smooth will apply the smoothing, and display the resulting smoothing line with this orange indicator. You can delete it with BXT Test Studio Delete or with Undo. Similar to Test Editor 1, you can insert camera change lines with BXT Test Studio Insert Camera Line. Tapping it will produce a target yaw velocity lock line, and then tapping and dragging back will produce a change line. This way enables this smoothing workflow for corners where you tap once to get a your reset line and then you drag back to get a smooth camera angle change line. You can see by the camera lines that the player's yaw will transition smoothly from this point to this point without a sudden jump. Unfortunately, right-click editing the camera angles or dragging the camera change lines is not implemented for the first release. I will work on it later. So you will have to do it through manual HLTest editing. One final neat command that I want to show you is BXT Test Studio Show Player B-Box 1. This will draw the entire player B-Box for the frame under cursor so you can easily see when the player is ducked, or how close the player is to certain triggers. Now this about wraps it for this guide. To close the Test Studio, use BXT Test Studio Close. When you do it, it leaves the Bridget file behind on disk. However, the next time you open the Test Studio, it will overwrite it with the new content. If you want to record the task into a video, I suggest copying the Bridget file and then adding the BXT capture commands into it manually. I hope you will like the new task editor. It took a lot of work, just look at all the GitHub squares I filled, but I think it really makes it easier and more fun to create Half-Life tasks. so give it a try, bye!